in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, blessed be your glorious and wonderful name, Lord Jesus. You who are the everlasting God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. This morning, we are so blessed that you are here in our midst because of your promise which says, where two or three gather in my name. And we have gathered together in your name today. And therefore, we are assured of your presence. And we know that you want to move amongst us Holy Spirit, we know that you are willing and ready to have your way in our midst as long as we yield ourselves to you. And so this morning, Holy Spirit, come have your way in this place. Come have your way amongst us. Move in this place. Even as we sing our songs and offer our thanksgiving and our worship to the God who alone is worthy, we ask, Holy Spirit, you would captivate our hearts and our minds you would be there and you would help us to focus on jesus about whom this gathering is and so holy spirit you are welcome you are welcome in this place hallelujah we give you glory and honor and we bless your name in jesus name amen amen let us worship the lord together upon the throne
worthy. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and He is the end. Hallelujah. And that's why. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Wash away my sin
whatever baggage they were carrying, whatever bondages they were bound with, whatever, you know, issues they were handling, Jesus always welcomed them with arms open wide and they could feel and sense his love and his concern and his warmth. You know, we human beings probably do not show as much concern or love or patience the way Jesus did. But that is where the Holy Spirit steps in and He helps us to have the same mind that Christ Jesus had. If it were not for the Holy Spirit, it would never, never be easy for us to show the kind of love and concern and warmth that Jesus showed to whoever came. Mankind is always ready to judge. They're always ready to form an opinion. They're always ready in their minds and in their hearts to determine what somebody else is or how they are. They're ready to put a category or place them in a box or place them in a category. But that was never Jesus. That was never Jesus. Of course, he knew every heart. He knows every mind. But he also gives an opportunity to each one by showing them, helping them understand what is good, what comes from God, and what is not good, what does not come from God. The Psalmist David talks about times of refreshing in the presence of God. And I know there's an old chorus that goes, times of refreshing here in your presence. How my soul would long to soak in your love and your presence. But most of us would not know that chorus. I don't want to sing that chorus. But as we sing this one that we just sang, as we sing it one more time, I, I want us to, in our minds, imagine the Lord Jesus standing in front of us with, with a, a smile on his face and with love that is clearly visible and, and just waiting to hear from us. He has this expression on his face which says, okay, I'm listening. What would you like to say to me? Will we run short of words or would we be able to express our love to Jesus? Would we be able to express our gratitude to Jesus? As our eyes are closed this morning, I want us to, I want us to bring that picture to mind. Think of Jesus standing in front of you. He probably has shaken hands with you, and he probably has already said hello to you, and now he's waiting to hear from you. What would you tell him? How will you respond to his open arms, to his embrace this morning? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in His wonderful face and the things. Jesus. 
say, turn your thoughts to Jesus. Turn your thoughts towards Jesus. Drink deep of His one comforting love. And the thoughts of sin and self. are closed and as you picture Jesus in front of you would you want to tell him this would you want to say to him I love you Lord and I lift my voice to out of a sincere heart, if it rises out of a heart that has no malice, rises out of a heart that is yielded and surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, it will rise, rise up to Him as a pleasing sound in His ears, as aroma that would be pleasing to his nostrils. Hallelujah. This morning, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter what baggage you are here with. It does not matter what background you have come from this last week. It does not matter the cause of your stress or the burden that you're carrying. The master says, come unto me, means bring them to me. Bring them to me and exchange it for my yoke. This morning, let there be an exchange that takes place. Let there be an exchange that takes place. You know, one of the dangers of being silent is that we can easily be distracted. I would encourage you to lift your voices to the Lord so that you're not distracted from what we are focusing on right now. He says, come unto me and I, I will assure you of rest. And that rest is a very, very complete rest. It is a rest which really relieves us from all stress and all all, all heaviness. It is a rest which is very, very, which results in a lightness that only Jesus can give. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come and exchange it with me. Trade your sorrows for my joy. Trade your sickness for health that I give. Trade your pain for comfort from me. 
because I am the only one who can give you genuine love, genuine joy, genuine peace. I am peace. I am joy. I am love. I am light. Therefore, come exchange it with me. This morning, if you do that with sincerity, and if you're focused on Jesus, He will do it. He will. He has done it. I know most of you have experienced it at some point in your life. And you have known this wonderful counselor, this Prince of Peace. You have experienced Him in the past. And you can experience Him in your current situation, in your present circumstance. He is there. And He will. He will. He will come. He will bring peace. Because when He comes, He comes with the whole package. He does not come in installments. He comes with His entire package. That's who He is. That is who Jesus is in this morning. Turn your eyes. Turn your thoughts. Turn your attention to Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray your people would experience, they would sense, they would experience in their life your warm touch, Lord, your gentle, loving embrace. They would sense your love, God, just enveloping them this morning. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way in this place. Come have your way. Come have your way. Come, have your way. Amen. Nice to see you all in the house of the Lord. And uh, thank you, uh, Lord, for keeping your people safe, sound, healthy, and happy. And uh, God's blessing be upon you this morning. We have heard all these announcements. And I... I, I'm not really happy about uh, spending more than two minutes in announcement. But then what to do? Sometimes you'll have to announce it ten times for one person to understand what we are talking about. <laughs> so all of you heard the announcement? Everybody understood what these announcements are? And about next Sunday? We are, we are looking, looking forward, forward to, to that, that great Sunday. Sunday. I, I wish every Sunday, Sunday would be like, like that. that. Amen. And, and uh, I would like, like you to pray for something that is upon my heart. heart. Um, I, I don't, don't want to explain anything about it, about it but, but uh, just, just to pray, pray Lord, the pastor, pastor has some concern, concern some burden upon his heart, heart and you know what it is, but um, Lord, you meet that need. And if we, uh, we have a place, we have a place, but we want, uh, want um, two crores of rupees to build an auditorium which will solve most of our space problem. <coughs> and then I would like you to, how many of you remember that we have been fighting a case with, with the central, central government, government for the last 25 years and uh, for, for a piece of land. And, and we have won one, two, two cases, cases two, uh, twice, but um, they are given 90 days to appeal and they don't appear within 90 days and after 90 days they go and apologize and then the court will sympathize with them and give them allow them to appeal. And so the, we want you to pray because that is a land over which our church went and prayed and claimed and um, uh, we want that case. We don't want to continue the case. And the Lord will, must intervene and you please pray for that. God is a good God, and I don't believe the Lord will let that land go off because it is his land. 
I mean, the whole world is his. But uh, we want we want you to remember that in prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Christmas week. I love Christmas season because it is cold. And in the cold, you can dress up well, eat well, and... Uh, sleep well and i hope that we will not uh, sleep too much that also is not good and uh, sleep the minimum and uh, enjoy other activities also we have been looking into the into the holy spirit what is the holy spirit and so i would like to um pass on to you, just uh, we have only a few minutes here left, and I am sure I'll be able to finish this in a few minutes. The, the first thing we learned about the Holy Spirit was, um, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of knowledge. Spirit of knowledge. And the second lesson we learned was that it's a, He is a spirit of wisdom. And uh, in knowledge, we collect information. So we, we, we understand what a thing is. And wisdom is the right application of knowledge, the right time, the right purposes. And knowledge can be very dangerous if not accompanied by wisdom. And the Holy Spirit is a spirit of wisdom. He is wisdom. He is the source and fountain and um, origin of all wisdom, all understanding, and all knowledge. Everything comes from Him. And so today I would like to uh, talk to you uh, very briefly the third thing, the third thing is the Holy Spirit cleanses and empowers the believer. He cleanses and he empowers believer. And if you are a believer, and this is the reason we encourage you to seek the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and power. And uh, I want to encourage all of you, you know, uh, somebody was mentioning the other day, Pentecostal Church, denominations like Pentecost, like Assemblies of God, Church of God, IPC, Sharon Pentecost, and this Pentecost, that Pentecost, and then Lord of Numerous, Independence, and all uh, Pentecost, so many are there. Uh, in all the Pentecostal churches, we all the believers are supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit and live in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to not only abide in you, but He becomes very active in you and through you. And that is very, very important. But, but unfortunately, unfortunately is not, not more than 40% of, of members of Pentecostal churches are really Pentecostals. Pentecostals. Yeah. Uh, Pentecostals, Pentecostals are those who experience, experience Pentecost. And, and what that, that experience is, you read in Acts chapter 2. That, that is Pentecost. Pentecost. And, and we are called Pentecostals because so we experience what the book of Acts chapter 2 uh, explain. As the disciples or 120 people who gathered in that room, what they experienced on the day of Pentecost. Now, the Pentecost, they're, they're used to, the Israelites used to have a festival of Pentecost. That is the gathering of uh, first fruit. And, and it, it was, was a big, big celebration, celebration 
and uh, that, that happens exactly 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ to that in the first uh, in the year and, and what the people have experienced on that day happened to be Pentecost according to the Old Testament celebrations and because it happens on that day we call it Pentecost but the experience is when the Holy Ghost come according to the promise of Jesus Christ he said you wait in Jerusalem until the promise Holy Spirit comes upon you because it is that which gives you power to fulfill what I have commissioned you. I've given you one commission. The Lord has given just one commission for the church to fulfill and that is to go into uh, every part of the world and he did not mean that one person does it or he did not even mean all the apostles should do it in the first century itself. But by the time the Lord comes for the rapture of the church, the whole world should be evangelized, declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. But for that you need, that is not an easy task, it is a task only the Holy Spirit can accomplish through people who have submitted themselves to the Lord and to the Holy Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit in order to fulfill that purpose. That is the purpose for which the Holy Spirit is given. You shall receive power when, when the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit shall come upon you. And, and then you shall be witnesses. All the world, starting in Jerusalem, your home, and then moving on to the neighbors, and then the next neighbor, until you reach the entire planet Earth with the message of the cross. That Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came and he died on the cross as a sacrifice for the sins of the entire human race. One perfect sacrifice. And therefore, this message should be, should be declared to the entire planet Earth, to every creature. And every living creature, every living creature who, to whom God has given a mind to perceive and understand. And that is human people. And that's why the Holy Spirit is, is given. And we all need to be filled with that Holy Spirit. And I encourage all of you who are not yet, you know, there are believers who are 10, 10 years, they're believers, 15 years believers, but when you ask them to pray in public, they say, no, I'm not used to, why is that? That's very strange. And even a child can pray, but a grown-up believer cannot pray in public. Why is it? They are timid. And they are afraid they make mistake when they pray. And they cannot testify. Why? Because they are afraid they may stumble. And they don't know how to say it. There is an answer, only one answer to that problem. Not as a degree, not as a year of schooling. The answer to that problem is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And because it is God's will for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can confidently pray. You who are evil, Jesus is talking to the people, to the fathers, you who are 
evil in your thinking, all in your actions, or selfish. If you are willing to give good gifts to your children, how much more our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit who will ask Him. And that, that asking is not just to once, you know, in the morning pray, Lord, Lord fill me with the Holy Spirit, Spirit and then we forget about it. it. No, it is everyone who keeps on asking shall receive. That is the real translation of that verse. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. And knock and the door will be opened. The real translation is, Everyone who keeps on asking shall receive. Everyone who keeps on seeking shall find. Everyone who keeps on knocking the door, the door will be open. Hallelujah. And God will not keep the door shut to anyone who is earnest and who is so hunger, angry and thirsty for the Holy Spirit. And, and so, so I encourage all, all of you, you need it. We cannot live a, a, a victorious Christian life without that spirit coming upon us and controlling us and then using us. And so the, the, what the Holy Spirit does is he cleanses us and then he empowers the believers. So for what? Just to fulfill God's commission. Going and, and preaching and declaring, and declaring the gospel. Now, now you, you will notice that the Isaiah chapter 6. I encourage you to go and read that chapter if possible tonight itself. Before you go to sleep. Because that one chapter will help you to understand what I am saying this morning. The Holy Spirit cleanses and empowers the, the believer, believer, both you, you will find, find in that chapter. God is doing in the, the life of Isaiah. In a knowledge, we, we, we talked, talked about knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge enables us to collect truth. And wisdom enables us to select the right portion of a truth to apply to the right occasion. And the Holy Spirit does both for us. If we allow the Holy Spirit to come and live in us, and do not grieve Him, do not quench Him, and do not make Him sad, and He can feel all these. So the Holy Spirit is not just an influence, it's not a force or a power, He is a person. Hallelujah. It is a person who is with us, a, a divine person. person. And, and the, so, so the third thing the Holy Spirit does is to give us the freedom to speak when we come to deliver it. Knowledge enables us to collect truth. Wisdom enables us and give us the freedom to speak when we have to speak. The, the truth, truth of God. God. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, you read about the vision that Isaiah had. And you know the content of that entire chapter. For the first time, Isaiah was a priest. And perhaps he prophesied before also. But he was destined to be a mighty prophet. But, but then, then God has to prepare him to be a sharp-edged sword in his prophetical ministry. And so he had a personal confrontation with the Lord of Glory who appointed him and anointed him. He had, he had a vision of God, God Almighty for the first time. And in His glory, and in His brilliance of that, gl that glorious light of God, 
who was seated on the throne. Isaiah saw not only God, for the first time he saw himself. Now, I, I asked, asked this question some time ago. I spoke about Isaiah's experience, experience, not teaching on the Holy Spirit, Spirit but my subject was something else. else. But, but I asked that question, question did he like what he saw? He saw? I said Isaiah saw himself for, for the first time. time. Did, Did he, he like what he saw about himself? himself? Our, Our sister, sister says no. How, How many agree to that? No, no he, he didn't, didn't like at all. all. He, he didn't, didn't like himself. When he saw in, in the light of a God's glory. He, he was, was a priest. And he was a prophet. And he had all the reason to feel about himself so good. And what all of us need who feel so good, I ask somebody, how are you? I am good. How, How are you? you? I am good. I, I ask who told, told you you are good. Mm -hmm. I, I sold, sold myself. myself. That's, That's your pride. pride. And, and when, when others, others say you are good, good that is your reputation. reputation. And, and when, when God, God says you are good, good that's your character. character. Is, is it easy for God, God to look at you and say good? good? Isaiah, Isaiah thought he was good. He was, he was a minister. He, he was a priest. And he was a prophet. And he was a religious man. But he didn't like when he saw himself. And he saw himself only in the light of God's glory. And some of us, including myself, I think there is a great need for us to have that confrontation with God. If, if we don't, don't we, we go, go on thinking, thinking that, that we are good, I am good, what's, what's wrong with me, me? I'm unlike, unlike others, I am not like even, even this publican. publican. That's, That's what, what the Pharisees thought. There is a great need for all of us. To have a desire to see God. And where can we see Him? This book will reveal to you God. And when you begin to see God as He is revealed to us in this book, then you see yourself in that light. And, and you wouldn't like you yourself. And, and that, that is the place where all of us need to come. Otherwise, Otherwise we'll go on thinking, I am good. Quite strong. I, I do everything right. right. And, and he, he cried out in that. that Moment of, of a revelation and realization. He cried out, what was he crying out? Oh, unto me. I am ruined. I am undone. You know why? He expressed it by saying, I have unclean lips. And, and I, I live among, among people with unclean lips. Why, why the emphasis is given to lips in that, that revelation? You know, you know why? What, what do we, we use the lips for? We use our lips for so many things. 
we, we you, you know, know a, a lip kiss. kiss. And um, then, then it, it helps, helps us to eat, and it helps us to speak, and it helps us. But mostly, lips are used for expression and speaking. So how does the lips become unclean? What does the Bible say is about speaking? Out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks, the lips speak. So when Isaac cried out, I am unclean, what was he admitting? Is the uncleanness on the lips? No. That reveals an unclean heart. That, that is, that, that is the seriousness of it. An unclean heart, and, and the, the lips, lips become, become unclean. It, it is, is very important, important, my friends. It is not just the lip that, that speaks; it, it is the heart that speaks. And, and when an unclean heart begins to speak. The, the lips are used, and, and the lips become unclean too. And, and what does the Holy Spirit, Spirit does? In verse 7, can you look at verse 7? Isaiah chapter 6. God is speaking to Isaiah. And when Isaiah cried out, admitting his problem, admitting that he is unclean, and I possess unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. And, and you know, know what happened, happened what, what God, God did. did. One, One of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. What God is doing with Isaiah, he is preparing Isaiah for the message that he would give to him to convey to the people. That's a heavenly message, a divine message. An, an eternal message, message so important. And that message requires clean, sanctified lips to speak out. God's message. God is preparing his prophet. A spokesperson. His heart must be clean. So, so that, that his, his lips will be clean. clean. And, and he, he said, I have touched you. This fire, this coal burning. And that has cleansed you. What does that fire stand for? Coal. It stands for the Holy Spirit. And, and we need this Spirit's ministry to us first. Any 
speech to be effective and convincing has to be delivered with absolute confidence. The listeners must realize that the speaker truly believes what he is talking about. He is convinced. And so when we preach, we must preach with the deep conviction and the clarity. Confidence can be evident only when the speaker himself is obedient to the truth. The gospel is the truth and that is the only truth for the salvation of mankind. And God's word is truth because God is truth. As far as preaching is concerned, anyone can preach. And let everyone, whether you are teaching a Sunday school to the children, don't consider it to be something less than preaching, no. A teacher who teaches God's word to the children. If you did not know, let me tell you that before you come before the class, before the children, you must be prepared by the Holy Spirit and by the cleansing power of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And you see God so that you can tell the children the truth and the truth will remain in the children. And, and for that, that every Sunday, Sunday school teacher must realize this responsibility is so great. You have a unique privilege of molding the children in your care. I always say there are two professions in the world that is good and effective. One is a medical line, people, nurses and, and the doctors. And then the other one is teacher. Because we both deal with people every day. And now I know why. Sister Roshan told me some time ago why she likes this, this job that she has. There also you meet public. Dealing with public, you will know their grievances, they know their struggles, and they know their problems. And uh, so uh, when they come, that gives had well, an opportunity to tell, tell them the right way of doing things. Sunday school teachers, you are no less than a senior pastor of the church. In fact, that senior pastor will enjoy his ministry as the children grow up in his church. And, and who, who helps help them? them? You, the, the teacher. teacher. Because, because today's children are tomorrow's leaders in the church. church. Today's children makes tomorrow's strong churches. That is the importance of a Sunday school teacher. And, and that the, the teaching children, small children, children is a talent. It, it is an ability. Probably I cannot do it. it. 
and we need more teachers. We need, by the way, that's an announcement, a spiritual announcement. Everything happens here is spiritual. Don't think it is not spiritual. This offering part is not spiritual, but the worshiping part was spiritual. And, and the, the announcement, announcement was not spiritual, spiritual but, but the, the preaching is spiritual. Is spiritual. No, no, the, the announcement is also is spiritual. spiritual. <laughs> this is so, so nice, nice to see our sister, sister Samuel after a very long time. time. I, I can, can see the Lord has touched her. And, and I, I want, want you, you to know that God, God loves you. you. He, he does, does things that, that for which we, we, are we are not worthy. And, and yet, yet he keeps ministering to all of us. And, and we, we need to know. I can see a smile on Twinkle's place these days. days. She's smiling more than she used to. Because she has a reason for that. He puts a smile who puts this smile on our faces? It is our good Lord. So, so keep smiling. Hallelujah. Speak the truth. And when we are confronted with a personal confrontation with God is so necessary today. Many pastors, not many, all the pastors, I am burdened that the word of God is being fulfilled right in our eyes. Where it says many will fall from their faith and many People's love will grow cold. It is so sad that pastors who have been pastors for 20 years, 15 years, just leaving the faith and going back to their old life. Pastors. And, and the pastors have a problem. problem. Many, Many of them have marital problem. problem. Many, Many of them have a sexual problem. problem. Ministers of the gospel. What is happening? As described in the word of God, as the last days, last moments are coming to an end. One can expect all these things to happen, but it doesn't have to happen to you or to me. If we believe the truth of God's word and cling to the truth. Thank God for the truth of God's word. When I see these things, I know that the time is so very short. I said, I cried out, I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. <clears throat> that that confession, confession brought consecration. And, and if you ever want to confess, this is the way to confess. confess. Another, Another confession that I will encourage you to read in Psalm number 51. David's confession. If there are forgiveness in God, there is forgiveness. But forgiveness is never granted without your confession. There is no consecration without confessing it. Crying out, I am ruined. And I'll read Psalm 51 to see how to repent. How, how to, to confess, confess your, your sin before, before God. God. If it's not, not young, young people, my, my children, children, don't take things, things for granted. granted. 
You, you get, get into, into a mess, mess sometimes, and you mess up your life, and, and you think all I have to say, oh Lord, I'm I'm sorry sorry that that I am sorry it happened. That's not repentance. To sit in the, in the presence, presence of God. God. Something that you must be convinced of, that you have crucified the Son of God again. You caused His heart to be broken. God is hurt. God is broken. And is it a small matter for the death to say, Oh, Lord, it happened. It happened to everybody. It happened to me also. Forgive me. That's not repentance. You come to the presence of God and let God, the Holy Spirit himself, deal with you. Bring that deep conviction of the sin. Do you, you give, give it, it up? up. It, it is, is that, that confession that, that will bring consecration. consecration. The, the call from, from the altar of fire. Unless you feel that you experience that the Holy Spirit convicting you and then you are broken. What breaks the heart of God must break you. Without, without that. that, there is no consecration. Believer's speech needs to be cleansed. Here we have a consecration. And after consecration, the commissioning of the prophet. Now, now, who, who is doing, doing all this? The, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We, we need, need the Holy Spirit's influence, influence to keep us from uttering many things that, that hurt people, people, not only hurt people, people but, but hurt, hurt the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit too. There, there are two birds who look alike, dove and the pigeon. They, they are look alike, alike but, but they are not, not like each other. They, they are, are quite, quite different. different. There, there are so many differences between a dove and a pigeon. And what many of us have, and what many churches today have, is a pigeon church. Uh, what do you, if you want to know about that, I have a lesson about differences between dove and pigeon. Dove, the Holy Spirit is like a dove, not pigeon. We have a very popular man in Kerala, in, in the, the city, city from, from where Kochumola has come. But, but that doesn't mean, mean that everybody, everybody in that, that city, city is like that. that. And, and he, he has, has thousands and thousands and thousands of people as his followers. I don't, I don't say, say followers, followers of Christ, Christ but, but his followers. followers. And, and what, what I am noticing these days is such very popular, world-famous pastors allow their son to come in, whether he has a call for the ministry or not. They are brought into it, and they also become very popular because they have stage big, huge stage and popularity, name, money in abundance. So, 
So, so I, I saw, saw a video, video clip uh, in, in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp that in one, one of his big meeting, I mean, he has, has I, don't I don't know how many thousands, thousands. 20,000, 30,000. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. And he's prophesying. And he's, 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 you know, only, only problem, problem with this kind of churches, churches is the charismatic, charismatic churches, churches, the new generation, generation prosperity churches, churches there. There, there is, is no gospel, gospel preaching. There, there is only motivational talk. talk. And, and there it is not a talk, talk, it is shouting. shouting. They first they create a hype. Everybody, Everybody sing and then, then they dance and clap hands. They, they forget about themselves. Oh, exciting. Things, things are happening, manifestation, manifestation falling, rising, rising, and all, all these, these things, things keep happening. happening there. And, and this poor fellow, uh, Boy, you are standing, standing up. God, God is telling now. God is depositing in your account 1.5 crores or rupees. And I am not exaggerating. This is what he said. You, you check, check, you check. You, you check, check your, your account right now. And, and then, then he calls somebody. You check your account. And um, hello. And, and he's calling from, from the stage. Did, did you, you check, check your, your account? account? God is depositing 1.5 crores rupees in your account. Everybody who is in need of answers, believe God. God is depositing about 50 lakh and 25 lakh rupees in your account. Check, check, check. And then he is calling this fellow. Hello. And yes. yes. Did you check your account? Did, did, did you find that 1.5 crore rupees in your account? And he said, yes, yes, yes. It, it is, is in my, my account. account. Why, Why he didn't call, call somebody sitting there and ask them to check their, their phone? phone? No, no preaching. preaching at, and, and, and then, then uh, he, he, he was... Shouting, hey, God is depositing in your account. That is not the gospel. If God was depositing money in the account of people, my goodness, there will be no poor people among us today. I will not be as poor as I am. I want to buy a small car only for myself. But, but I, I don't, don't have, have any money. money. <laughs> that, that is a... a <laughs> and and there, there the, the people, people are howling, hey, hey dancing, dancing and... and <laughs> money. That, that is, is all an arranged drama. drama. The, the man, man out in there, there he is already, already waiting to, to receive his call. call. That's, That's what, what happened. happened. There, there is a gold offering. We, we have this project, project which is costing about three crores rupees. rupees. Uh, you, you can, can even give in gold. gold. There was, and, and their, their own people stand there are putting gold. gold. But, but uh, you know, know what, what do you call it? it? The gold-plated thing, thing, not real gold, and, and that, that kind of things. They, uh, their own people will put first. Everybody, everybody is, uh, and seeing this poor, poor believer sitting there, there I must also. I have, have this bangle. I have this ring. I have as my chain. I will also go and put, and they start bringing real gold. And when the offering account, they all collect their own. Whatever, whatever they, they gave. God's name is blasphemed. God's name. What happened to that name? And it became a big controversy. And then this 
the, 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 the same, same fellow, you know, in one, one service he was coming, coming Sunday service, service. He, was he was coming with a, with a short, you know, the, the thing that you use for walking and all that, a short, standing. And he was making this announcement, if Jesus were alive today, he would have come like this only. Which, Which Bible he reads, I don't know. Perhaps, Perhaps they, they have printed their own Bible, Bible version of the Bible. Bible. My, My children, be serious about your faith. Be serious about the one whom you believe. He is not a man that he should lie. He tells the truth. He is the truth and he tells the truth. And that is why I said the preachers must take special heed. What do we speak? We, we need, need the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit to put bit and bridle upon us to, to keep us from saying things which will take the minds of our hearers away from Christ and eternal truths and set them on things of the earth. When, when you speak, speak these, these kind of things from, from the pulpit, pulpit that's what happened. Your, your attention is turned away from the truth. And Jesus and I am the truth. And that means if there is one to whom all attention and all worship and all thanks and all praise must go, it is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ who paid the price in order to purchase you and me and to make us his own. Hallelujah. Another reason we need the Holy Spirit is to bypass our physical weaknesses and take charge. I will close here. I have just uh, two minutes to talk, which I shall do next Saturday. Will you stand with me? What, what was, was our, our thought today? today? The, the Holy Spirit, Spirit cleanses us, us and, and then He empowers us. First, First that, that cleansing, cleansing has to be, to be done. done. For, For that, that the Holy Spirit, Spirit the fire from the altar of God, God must touch us. Our, our lips our hearts. Lift, Lift up our hands to God, God and submit ourselves to God. Submit ourselves to God and His Word. Submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. It is His desire to bring cleansing to you. Hallelujah. That a fire the, the fire always in the Bible, Bible is, uh, is, uh, is, it talks about the Holy Spirit. There is a cleansing power. Hallelujah. He knows where we need the cleansing. And we all need to come before God and allow a personal revelation of God. You sit with the open Bible and see God. As, as presented, presented to us in his, his word. word. He, he is, is holy. 
He is holy. He is pure. He is the Almighty. He is God, Lord, Almighty. He is worthy of our worship. Angels worship Him. Angels bow before Him. Hallelujah. He is the eternal God. He is the everlasting God. He is great and greatly to be praised. He sees everything. He is the beginning and the end. He sees everything. He sees the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. He is God Almighty. There is nothing that He cannot do. He can do all things. And He sees that we what we do not see. He can hear what we cannot hear. Hallelujah. And even the things that you imagine, Jesus hears and listens. Hallelujah. Job said, I want to see God, His movement. I look to the south, north, and east, and west. But I don't see Him. But then He said, But I know one thing. He sees the path that I take to walk. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you this morning for speaking to us. Lord, we are living in a, in a time when people are not able to take sound doctrine as your word says. But, but it seems all of us have an itching ears. We hire teachers and prophets to come and tell us what our itching ears are longing to hear. My brothers and sisters, be wise. Don't be deceived. What God speaks sometimes may hurt us. But He hurt us not to destroy us. He had us to make us whole, to cleanse us. So let us yield ourselves to God. Father, we thank you for speaking to us and we heard. May your voice continue to ring in our ears, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your son Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your plans for us and your purposes in our lives. Continue to speak to your people, O oh God, drawing them closer to you in humility and in repentance and true repentance, that we may be forgiven and cleansed and we may be consecrated for the purpose for which you are keeping us alive. Hallelujah. And we who are alive are the ones who, whom you can use in this generation, in our world. So bless your people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.